Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us today for our Bible study session. And we invite you to stay tuned to worship time, which is 11 o'clock or right after this uh, teaching time. Uh, so we're glad to have you join us today at First Baptist Church. We have been talking about Elijah the prophet and some of his uh, challenges and difficulties and things that he's faced uh, when the Lord sent him forth to be a prophet. And so we see that he is, has encountered some evil people, Ahab Hab, and Jezebel, king and queen of Israel. And so he, I think we talked about the, um, we'll talk about the, um, well, we'll talk about, we talk about today the, um, yeah, today we're talking about the sacrifice. Remember, um, uh, e Elijah ran off. He was afraid of Jezebel. And so he was in hiding. He was, went to the desert. The Lord fed him there with the ravens and the brook. And then he sent him to uh, a, a place over in Phoenicia, which was the home of Jezebel. And he encountered this widow lady that God directed him to. And um, she had uh, nothing to eat. And uh, Elijah said, please give me a drink of water. So she was going to go get a drink of water. Why are you getting a drink of water? Bring me a little piece of bread. I said, I don't have any bread. I just got a little bit of flour, a little oil. And we'll cook one last cake. And my son and I are going to eat it and we're going to die. So anyway, as, the, as God provided, he provided that uh, flour container never went Empty, the oil jar, the bottle never ran dry. And that lady had food and she took care of him, gave him a place to stay. And he brought his, her son back to life who had died. And so now we see where he is uh, having a real trial here with the people of Baal, the worshipers of Baal. Um, Elijah said, hey, he told Ahab, let's have a meeting. Let's have this challenge. We're going to have a contest. You prepare a sacrifice for your God, Baal, and I'll prepare one for my God. And if, ask God to consume it. And the one that consumes it will be God of all. And they said, Ahab said, okay, that sounds like a pretty good deal. So that's what we have today uh, in this today. Well, many people claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. They follow God. They're loyal to God in their faithfulness. And so God does deserve high loyalty. And there are ways we find out those who are actually serving the Lord and doing for Him are the ones who are the faithful ones. A lot of people can claim to be a part of God through Christ, but they do nothing. They do nothing at all. And so God can use us to lead others to confess Him and be restored to Him for who He is. Well, three years have passed, a period of, that we've, so far up to this point, three years have gone by, and uh, Elijah announced the drought. Hey, there's going to be a drought. No rain until I say so. And so no rain came. And in the meantime, he went to these two different places. Now he's going somewhere else that the Lord is sending him for this contest. And so uh, Ahab still considered Elijah as the one who brought all this trouble to Israel. Hey, it's his fault. He's the one that's messed everything up around here, so we need to do something. Ahab called him, you troubler of Israel. <laughs> you got us in all this trouble. Why'd you do all that? So suddenly um, uh, Elijah received the word from the Lord to go and present himself to the king. So he went and said, all right, Ahab, I'm here. Let's have this contest. We'll see who's going to be God. And so he will be the one that can consume the altar, the sacrifice, the altar. He will be God. So that's, that's how we see this starting here. So in uh, chapter 18, we start with verses number 20 uh, through 21 and see how this unfolds here. So it says, Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on, on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. No response. It's kind of disheartening when you are trying to get some, convey a message over to people and they don't respond. They just stand there like, I didn't hear what he said, or what's he saying? Uh, so 
said, hey, this is it. If God is going to be God, then let him be your God. If Baal is God, then let him. You can't ride the fence, straddle the fence. You got to be on one side or the other. And of course, Jesus has said that all through the New Testament. He said, you can't serve two, two masters. You can't. You can only serve one. One master. So we can only serve one master. So uh, that's what happened. Three years to, uh, w took place, and he went to Mount Carmel. Cal Mount Carmel is near the Mediterranean coast of Palestine. It's a place of great beauty, and it was Carmel stands for, for garden land. It was a garden land on this mountain. Pretty place to be. So Elijah was a spokesman, and Baal and Asherah, Remember, Asher is connected with Baal. It's the goddess connected to Baal. And so they were, uh, had a large group of followers that came out for the, This is a spectator event. I guess if you could charge for tickets, you could have sold a ton of tickets because all the people came out. They wanted to see what was going to happen with this contest. So Elijah had a special word for all the people. He said it began with a concluding question. And a probing question and concludes with a challenge to make a choice. So he said, if God be God, let's do this contest and see who wins. And God will be God if he so chooses to be. So uh, Elijah said, how long will you waver between these two opinions? Why don't you make a choice? Some people can't make a choice. Um, <laughs> have you ever taken children or you ever gone yourself to the ice cream parlor? 31 flavors, what flavor you want? <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to choose. <laughs> make a choice. You either pick chocolate, vanilla, or whatever. Just make a choice. We can't stand here all day while you make up your mind. So Yahweh was the, was the covenant name of God for the people of Israel. Yahweh God. Baal was a male divinity of Phoenicians, and Asher was the goddess consort of Baal. So those are the parties here. We got God on one side, Baal, and Asherah on the other side. Although Asherah followers didn't show up, just the Baal followers. Uh, I guess they invited everybody to come, but no Asherah followers or priests were there in this group of people that were coming out for this. So Elijah's message was clear. Uh, you can't hold two loyalties. You got to have one loyalty. So it's time to choose, and the question expects an answer. So when you ask a question, you would expect somebody to answer you. Well, when, when, uh, when Elijah asked this question, the choice is simple. Choose God or choose Baal. They didn't say anything. So they were silent. Silent in their response and didn't say a thing. In verses 22-26, we see the process of beginning this challenge and the preparation for it. So let's read those verses where he says, Then Elijah said to them, I'm the only one of the Lord's prophets left. Well, that's not true. The Lord had a lot of prophets, and he's going to answer him later on. But he thought he was the lone ranger, the last one left. Everybody else has been killed off. Uh, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves. He said, okay, you get first choice. Choose which bull you want. It's your pick. And let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but don't set fire to it. Just have it right there ready. And I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you will call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. What you say is good. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls, prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon, from early morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. So that was the beginning of this preparation of what to do. And how to do it. So he said, get a bull. Let Baal choose one. I'll choose the other. Just don't set fire to it. We'll leave it just like it is and let God call on rain down fire from heaven to consume it. So call on the name of your God. I will call on my name. 
of God. Baal, priest, you go first. You get first choice. You get the first chance. But don't... Um, uh, Elijah had no fear they would succeed because Elijah knew Baal didn't exist. There is no Baal. It's a false god. So he knew that going in, he had a pretty good chance to win this thing. So the Lord isn't God because we make him God. That's a good statement. He is God because he is God. God is God. We didn't make him God. We came to know God through his revelation of himself, through, the, through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, through Israel, through the prophets, through all of those. Then, of course, he made, us, made known to us who he was through his son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world to die on the cross for us. So God who answers by fire, he will be declared God. He will be the God. So Elijah played right into the hands. He kind of baited them and fed them a little bit so they get excited about that. And uh, a storm, uh, as a storm god, Baal was also a storm god, and they believed that he was, excuse me, they believed he was responsible for lightning, of all things, of lightning. Well, what you say is good, the people said. Okay, we're going to do that. So priest of Baal, you go right ahead and set up your altar Get it all ready. Then you start calling on your God to rain down fire and consume this offering, sacrifice. And so they did all that. So Elijah turned his attention to the prophets and said, Here are the rules, just as you had. Well, I've already said that. Choose your bull. Don't light the fire. Prepare it. Then call on Baal. Answer us. There was no response. Hey, what happened? Baal didn't respond. Where is Baal? He wasn't there. Uh, he's not there. So what are we going to do? He said they, they got so excited they trampled around the altar and made a big mess just trampling around on it. Get back to that verse. Um, where was I? Yeah, call on the name of your God, light the fire. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Please answer us, Baal. And they danced around the altar they had made. So they trampled everything all around there. Just frantically saying, give us an answer, Baal. We need to hear from you. As soon as you can, let's hear from you. But there was no response and no one answered. And so this scene continued uh, nearly the time of the evening cycle. So this went on all day. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> from all morning, early morning until sacrifice time in the evening. This went on. Please consume this. Consume this. Bring down fire. Destroy it so we know that you are a God. Well, um, someone, a man by the name of Richard Nelson, concluded about Baal. He is no God. He's a joke. So I guess that's a good description of who Baal is or who people think he is. Well, in verses 31, 39, we see Elijah's turn coming up, and he's going to prepare and get everything ready and call on God to consume it. So here we go. Elijah took 12 stones. As soon as I find the verse. Oh, I'm, let me back up just a minute. Yeah, let's, let's get it a little more dramatic. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them while they were still. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he's sleeping. He must be awake. And so they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice, but there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Now, here comes Elijah. I'm starting with verse 31. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each tribe of Israel, descended from Jacob, for to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. He dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two seahs of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again. And they did it again. Do it a third time, he said. And they did it the third time. So there was 12 jars full of water poured on that little trench around there and on the, on the wood on the whole thing, symbolizing the 12 tribes of Israel, of course. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. 
At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and have done all these things as you command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. So, then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So all of that was consumed in that sacrifice that uh, Elijah had prepared. As soon as I turn my page. So, so it was Elijah's turn. He made all his preparation just like the others had done and got ready and they called out to their God and he never answered. And so now it was Elijah's turn and he had to first of all repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down, whether it was the altar that they had built and used and had been torn down and he rebuilt it for his sacrifice or whether it was some other altar that he did. Not clear on that. So he took these stones, symbolic of Israel, the 12 tribes, and next he dug this trench. It said it was a, a large enough to contain two seahs of seed. Y'all know how many seed two seahs is? it would be roughly two to two and a half gallons of seed that they poured into the container, water. Um, yeah, seeds. Uh, is that what he said? Let me get that back. I don't want to get you confused. Anyway, it was, it was a big trench is what we're trying to say. They dug a big trench all around that altar uh, that he had set up. So it would hold a lot of water. You could plant five gallons of seed in that ditch. So that'd take a pretty good sized garden, wouldn't it? If you planted five gallons of seed, it'd be pretty large. So anyway, then he said, fill it up with water. Three times they filled it up to where it was running over. The wood was soaking wet. All the meat of the animal was soaking wet. And so what do we do now? Uh, as he put it on the wood. Then he said, uh, seems that now that the altar and sacrifice were ready for fire, but not yet. That's when they poured the water. Four barrels, four barrels of water again and again for 12 barrels total. Uh, so what was about to take place would be difficult. It goes to show that it could only be a miracle from on high. So it had to be a miracle to, for this to be done. So his first concern was with the identity of the Lord, that he is known as the holy God. He said, our God is the holy God. He is the God of Israel. He is Yahweh God. He is the God over all Israel. And so he wanted to be clear that what was about to take place was not in his ability to do it, but it came from God. It was his ability to be able to do that and his power. He was just a servant who made the arrangements. And so he wasn't taking credit. And I, I, that's the way it should be with every servant of the Lord. Whatever we do for him, what, whether we teach a Sunday school class or uh, whatever we might do, it has to be for the glory of the Lord, not for our glory. So, uh, we're not to be patted on the back, and, oh, what a good lesson, what a good sermon, what a good this, that, and another. We don't get the credit. God gets the credit. So that's what he wanted to make sure that people knew that he was obedient to his master as one who sees his master as the final authority. God was the final authority uh, in all things, not just in this miracle, but in all things as he did this. Then we see the purpose for this whole contest had been to affirm that the Lord is God. Israel's God. He is the God. That word we use, uh, we see in Scripture some sovereign. God is sovereign. And when you say God's sovereign, He's supreme over all things. There are no other gods when it comes to God. He is the God. He is sovereign over all things. And so they, He had shown that Baal was already dead. There's no Baal. Y'all are, are worshiping a dead God. There is no God. And He needed to show 
to them that God was alive. All right, my God's going to show he's alive when he consumes all this uh, sacrifice and this whole altar is consumed. So the Lord heard and he answered, which he does, and we're grateful that he does. In verse um, 38, it said, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, even burned up the soil, scorched. It was scorched earth. Uh, and also licked up the water in the trench. And even the water was gone out of the trench. Um, I was trying to think about scorched earth. We think about in wartime, uh, some of these uh, bombs and stuff they drop, when they drop it, it just scorches all the earth. Especially when we think back to Vietnam when they used that nap napalm bombs. It was just a fireball, and it just scorched the whole earth. All the vegetation, everything was gone. It was just bare dirt left when that hit. So everything that was there was gone, everything. It was just scorched earth, and nothing left there. So this was no mere coincidental lightning flash that comes, uh, strike. Uh, could... <coughs> Could there be any doubt that the Lord is God when he did this? So lightning. Um, Baal was supposed to be a God of lightning also. Um, we was, Jimmy and I were visiting the Hubbles yesterday for a little while, and they lived in, uh, in uh, what country was that? Singapore. They lived in Singapore. And, of course, that was an island, and everything was high-rise buildings. Anyway, it said lightning was bad. They didn't have any rain there, but lightning and so it was easily to be struck by lightning outdoors. So you had to really be careful about lightning flashes since there was no rain. I don't know what they do for water. But anyway, that's, that was a comment that she made. So lightning, powerful lightning came and struck. And, and Elijah said, answer me, Lord, answer me. It's time for you to answer, Lord. Now would be a good time for you to answer. Let, let me know what, what you're going to do. So the fire came down and consumed everything. And when all the people saw this, they fell on their faces. They didn't just stand there and not say anything. They fell on their faces. Uh, the fear of the Lord went through them at that point in time. The fear of the Lord got them. They were fearful. They didn't want to be struck down by the lightning of God or the fire of God that would come and consume them. And so what was their comment? The Lord, He is God. And for emphasis, they said it again. The Lord, he is God. So they joined their voices in, in chorus to declare the Lord is God. So this was a um, God-led uh, uh, activity of Elijah to taunt or to go to <coughs> excuse me, Ahab and say, hey, let's get together and have a contest between your God and my God. Whichever one wins, he is God. So Elijah set this up. Ahab didn't know what was going on, evidently. Uh, he, he fell for it. He walked right into that. So the Lord, he is God. So our actions in the name of the Lord can lead others to know that he is God as well. So he is God. We know that. So what we do for the Lord is to be for his glory, as I mentioned a while ago, not ours. And God honors obedience to his word. So God blesses those who follow his word and seek to carry it out and to be a blessing to others and to be a witness to others, testimony to others that we serve the one true God. We serve the one true God through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to come to earth to, to reveal God fully and finally. He was the final revelation of God when he came to earth to show us what the Father's like. He said in John, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So we've seen God through the eyes of Christ. We see Christ through the eyes of faith to know who he is and what he did for us in dying on the cross. So no challenge is too great for God. God faces a lot of challenges every day. I guess every moment of the day, he faces a lot of challenges. And he's able to meet those challenges according to his will. We have a lot of challenges that is going on in the world today. How, how are these challenges going to work out? We don't know, but God knows. And it's going to work out according to His will. 
and what he decides will be done, what he already knows in advance of what's going to be done. So Elijah proved faithful. He was not the only one left. God's going to prove that to him later uh, here as we go through these last couple of lessons that he has others who have not bowed the knee to Baal or anybody else that are still faithful servants. So uh, Elijah got feeling sorry for himself. Oh, woe is me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm the only one left and they're after me. So he's, God's going to take care of him and all those others who are faithfully serving him. So next week we get into the, uh, the discouraged time of, <laughs> of, of Elijah. He should have been overjoyed. Hey, look what God has done. <clears throat> he should have been overjoyed. These other experiences where he provided food for him in the wilderness, where he provided food through the widow lady for himself and uh, was able to raise that child from the dead. And today this altar contest where God consumed it and Baal didn't. And now he's disappointed. He's going to go off again. <laughs> he's going to go off again and say, oh, woe is me. I'm in trouble, Lord. What are you going to do for me now? So we're going to see what God does him, does for him uh, in next week's lesson in chapter 19 of 1 Kings. So stay tuned for next week as we get back together to see what Elijah is going to do. This is where God shows him that there are still 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal, who are faithful servants. So we'll see that. So thank you for joining us today. And it's our privilege to have you as a part of our Bible study time, along with those who are here with me this morning. And I invite you to stay tuned to our worship service, which is coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you. Hope to see you back again next week. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day and all your blessings and all, your, all the provisions you've made for us as your people, as your children. Lord, guide us safely through this day. Help us to honor you in our lives, with our lives, and all that we do. And to be a, a one who is willing to confess that and share that. And, and know that you are the God that we know you to be through your son, Jesus Christ. So give us strength for this day and each day. Keep us safe in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.